One Piece Episode 8 is One Piece's only canon piece of side media. There's anime-only content, movies, novels, and more side material in One Piece, plenty of which are good enough for fans to practically beg for inclusion into main canon. But Episode 8 is an adaptation of Chapter 8, a novel officially supervised by Oda and considered to be One Piece's sole canonical piece of side content, ignoring silly fan responses he writes at the end of each volume that directly hint at major events that will come tens of years later, that is. Anime-only One Piece consumers, or indeed plenty of Western readers, won't even know that Episode A exists. Episode A came about as part of Jump's celebrations of One Piece hitting Chapter 1000. It's drawn by the exceedingly talented Boichi of Dr. Stone fame. Alongside this came two other notable spin-offs, one by Food Wars author Shun Saeki and another by Nisekoi's Naoshi Komi. And I love both of these two. The Food Wars chapters offer a great look into Sanji as a person beyond just his womanising gimmick, as well as a heartfelt look into his relationship with Zoro. And the Nisekoi chapter covers something that's from very long ago in One Piece, Vivi all the way back in Alabasta, and her heart-wrenching decision of whether or not to join the Straw Hats. However, I mention these not to go into them further, but more to set the scene for Episode 8. It has been an amazing year for One Piece, hitting not only 1,000 chapters, but 1,000 episodes of the anime, as well as having its first seemingly canon movie coming out soon, focused on Shanks, who is a character we still haven't seen fight a single time in One Piece's 25 year long run. Episode A comes as part of One Piece at the height of its popularity and relevance, in order to reflect on and add some extra meaning to one of the most important moments across One Piece's entire run, that being Marineford. In Marineford, we were treated to all we get of Ace's backstory, and yet all of it takes place prior to One Piece even starting. Episode A takes place just after One Piece's beginning and runs alongside the series all the way up to the events of Marineford, taking us to places we've been before, places we saw very little of, and is essentially split into two halves. The first surrounds Ace with his own crew, the Spade Pirates, and his resolve to surpass the Pirate King. And the second half covers Ace being aboard the Moby Deck alone, attempting to assassinate Whitebeard and retrieve his abducted crew, where he eventually gains Whitebeard's respect and he becomes one of the Whitebeard Pirates, and one of his sons. Honestly, I cannot recommend this manga enough. I'll put links in the pinned comment as to where you can read it. As of now it has no official translation, but if the magnificent art hasn't been enough to make you want to read this, then I swear, the combat, the dialogue, and just the overall window that this gives us into Ace and even Whitebeard is of so much value, I honestly think anyone invested in One Piece as far as the time skip should 100% read it. It's only 4 chapters long, you can read it for free online easily on any device in less than an hour and it will enrich your experience that much more. If the glowing recommendation wasn't enough for you, I want to talk about how it handles its main theme, that being Ace's relationship to paternity. It's this that I think makes this spin-off stand out, and it adds so much to our understandings of Ace and Whitebeard in the short duration of these pages. So, spoiler warning, if you haven't seen Ace's backstory, go get caught up to One Piece. It'll only run for like 3 years more, and if you don't catch up with One Piece by the time the One Piece is revealed, you will have it spoiled, and no spoiler warning can save you from that. For anyone that has caught up though to at least Marineford, let's talk about some of my favourite imagery in the entire One Piece canon. So. Final warning, 3, 2, 1, showtime. At the end of the first chapter, Ace makes clear his goal as a pirate. He wants to win a fight against Whitebeard, who is the only living pirate who could go toe to toe in a fight with the Pirate King. And chapter 2 then surrounds him getting to that point in order to battle him, but along the way we repeatedly see him shut down any and all conversation about the Pirate King. Even with Shanks himself, after he pieces together that Ace is Roger's son. His crew at the time takes this as bravado and dedication to his dream, but we, the audience, of course know that Ace curses his own bloodline and it's that that is driving him to surpass the Pirate King in the first place, to be a better person than his father was. And of course, after a show of strength battling Jimbei for 5 days straight, Ace earns the right to a 1-on-1 -on -one with Whitebeard. We see a battle begin a giant flash, and just as fast, the battle's over. Judas pieces together that the reason Ace needs to prove himself is to prove that he's better than his father, Roger. And we see the aftermath of his fight with Whitebeard. Ace, knocked out in an instant, wakes up under what has to be my favourite manga panel spread of all time. This absolutely monumental image is a two-page spread that you're met with at the end of chapter 2. Ace kneels defeated by Whitebeard and he's bared down upon by this huge face of Roger he sees in the cloud. And this page is phenomenal. 
Everything here is drawn in Boichi's typical photorealistic style for backgrounds, with sharp stars in the sky and the moon peeking out behind the clouds, but Roger's head is more like a shadowy impression in the sky with hollowed out eyes bearing down upon Ace. Clearly Ace is projecting this onto the sky itself, but it just expertly belays the overbearing weight that Ace feels is his dream to surpass his own father, the Pirate King. And I really, truly love this page, and it's enough to me that I find it hard to even put into words just how striking and meaningful this page is for One Piece. But I think this is the single best argument for why this manga should be required reading for any One Piece fan. This is of course set up as a challenge for Ace to overcome, and Ace does do his absolute best to actually beat Whitebeard in combat, but accidentally, along the way, the huge cloud hanging over him slowly fades away, and as he becomes Whitebeard's son, he rids himself completely of that mountainous burden he had hang over him all his life. So yes, like I said, if you've seen this far, absolutely go read the manga. Pinned comment has a link to all the translated chapters, I promise you it's worth your time, and you'll love it like one of your own sons too. With that, I'll end the video and I'll see you guys with more recommendations soon.